I could see this running through the school throughout many years to come, partly because of our school values already, and, and these fit in quite well underneath a lot of them. Hey, you can choose girls, who are you choosing? And being able to just pull out a reading that highlights somebody showing these values works really well, and, and it could be something that we could use even in the years we're not studying the Olympics. The Olympic values resources were amazing. We went on to the website and um, we put, downloaded the, the readers' notes, so I adapted them to the lower level readers, and so we talked about it and we did a lot more talking and vocab work. If you lose, do not just walk away and be all sad, be a good sport. The higher readers could dig deeper to find that meaning as well, so they were great for the whole class to use. And um, we also used the wheel of all the values. Okay. Right, the next part, who would like to read the next sentence? So throughout the term we could just keep promoting those values all the way through right to the children performing in a production. And it just fitted in really well because there was a lot of children that were quite apprehensive about a production. Some of them hadn't actually been in one at the school. And so for them it was a very big moment to be performing. It's a well worthwhile programme, you know, the kids love it. It gives them a chance to shine. It gives children a chance to be role models. It gives children a chance to be a part of a group. Yeah, they got into it, well, a lot deeper than we all thought they would because the values and the Olympics is something that they didn't know anything about. Because of how far apart they are, the kids are so young, so they were only little last time the Olympics were around. Very user friendly and the thing I liked personally about them was the interaction with the students. For example, the interactive whiteboard activities, the e-books were really great to use. I used them across um, a range of ages, for example with my own class as well as with my Fano class, which is a range of children from 5 to 13. The children could interact and actually come up and click on the items and were, were highly engaged, which is always a fantastic thing to have when, when every set of eyes is on the board and, and they're motivated and willing to contribute. It's got like different activities that you do and it's gets really fun. Because it's not just sitting down on a desk and doing writing. I kind of like learning about the ancient Greece Olympics, um, but I, 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 I like the modern day Olympic stadiums. I like learning about those. It was fun learning about that and watching some clips about them actually um, uh, versing each other. And we got to see Evelyn Williamson. We got a visit from her. More. 100,000? No. <laughs> no. So there's about, give or take, there's 11 or 12,000 athletes in an Olympic village. I think it's really neat and I think it's, it's great that they have ambassadors going out and talking to kids so that they can touch. Feel that, it's quite thin. They can see that they're real people, that they're probably smaller than they look on TV most of the time. You know, they're not these big, amazing, talented, gifted, like, almost superhuman people. They're just normal people who work really hard. Oh, that's gels. That's what you eat on the run and the Isn't they tasty? Oh, no, they're, they're quite yucky. <laughs> I think they relate to New Zealand schools and the school children really well. Linking it to the New Zealanders, the athletes that are there, our values as New Zealanders, as a society, is really important. And, and that's where the New Zealand Olympic resources really do tap into that area, puts it into perspective for the children that we are a nation that are really striving and doing well. And um, every child could be an Olympian one day.